<laughs> I had some background help. Um, today's video is going to be uh, entitled, My Fish is Sick, What Should I Do? Um, that's because in the presentation that I often make about uh, the top 10 questions that I get in fish health, that happens to be the number one question. Uh, maybe in Koi Beginner we'll just answer uh, the top 10 questions, but we're going to start with number one, and that number one is, my fish is sick, what should I do? Um, we have covered this kind of, um, but I want to just uh, start with real basics so that you can, um, if you have sick fish, you can actually just start this video and then uh, just go with me step by step. And uh, what's kind of funny is it doesn't really matter what's going on with the fish unless one's flopping around on shore, in which case um, that fish is sick, but you need to put them back in the water before you watch the rest of this video. Fish disease cases, 70% of them are going to come from water quality. And I'll basically discuss water quality um, a little bit. But when a fish is sick, the first thing that you do, first thing that you do is test your water quality. I know this differ, differs from if you were helping somebody else with their fish problem, but by all means, the first thing that you as the hobbyist with a sick fish should do is test your water quality. And those tests would be ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, pH, and carbonate alkalinity. I'll explain those. Ammonia, and we're going to have a whole video on ammonia. But ammonia is the first waste product of fish. It's basically the same thing as fish urine, and it leaks out of the fish. They don't pee it out. Well, they do a little bit. But mostly it leaks out through their gills. And uh, it goes into the water, which is great. And then um, biological processes break that ammonia down, unless those biological processes are not ready. That's beneficial bacteria, and we talked about bioseeding in another video. That would get it ready. Um, so a lot of times when you test your water and you test for ammonia, you'll find very high ammonia levels. It's probably why your fish are sick. Water changes, ammonia binders, suspended feedings, those three things will help with ammonia levels. But it's good to diagnose that early in a case because a lot of times people think that fish need medicine when all they need is better water. The second test that you would run is nitrite. Nitrites are produced by uh, beneficial bacteria into uh, from ammonia and the uh, nitrites leak back into the fish. They, ammonia leaks out and nitrites leak back in and uh, there's a way to fix that. You would uh, put a little bit of salt in the water, 0.3 percent would be more than enough. Um, some research has shown that 0.1 percent is enough to keep the nitrite from leaking back in um, to block reuptake of the nitrite. So test that and find out whether or not that is uh, part of the health problem. Sometimes you'll have ammonia and nitrite problems. Uh, the third test to run is nitrate. Nitrate is a common problem in experienced and, and uh, adult ponds where the pond has been set up for some time and uh, in the absence of plants or algae, nitrate levels get very, very high and they are immune suppressive. So a fish that's living in uh, high nitrate water usually is being exposed to high background pollution levels, high carbon dioxide, and uh, often that will trigger uh, illnesses as well. Again, water changes will fix the nitrate. So if the fish are sick, starting out with ammonia nitrite nitrate and pH. pH is a measurement. And we could go into uh, the michaelis menten equation and the uh, measurements of the free hydroxyl ions as a logarithmic square root of the hydroxyl ions in the water if you wanted to. That's fun. Uh, I'd recommend you uh, smoke a fatty before we do that. Um, but uh, pH is just a measurement. You want that number to be 6.8 or higher preferably really 7 to 7.4 would be just like perfect uh, if the pH is really low it's probably a cause of your illness it's kind of funny because I was just having trouble with my giant garami and uh, they started to look all moth-eaten with uh, their fins were getting ragged and they weren't eating and uh, I, I said well you know I, I take my own meta take my own advice and just start with water testing lo and behold it was a low pH fixed it fixed the fish no dramatic disease, no exciting fungus or anything like that. Um, so ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, pH, and carbonate alkalinity, uh, that's the KH test. 
well worth having because the KH is a forecaster of what your pH is going to do. It's not a very difficult test. You can even get that test at a pool supply store. Uh, in fact, I just found out that Hot Chemical, remember I was talking to you about Hot Chemical in another video, H-A-C-H, -H, real good reagents. They're actually making some pool test kits that you can use in your uh, fish tank. Um, the only test on there that you probably don't need is the uh, cyanobacidivisa thing. It, it has to do with pools. The rest of it is uh, they'll, you can measure chlorine, free chlorine, uh, carbonate alkalinity, uh, minerals, uh, as well as um, pH. It's kind of neat little test, cheap at Home Depot. So back to water testing. If the water testing doesn't show anything wrong, um, then you kind of want to backtrack and look a little bit at a crowding. Uh, if the pond is very crowded, water flows are low, filtration is real dirty, you're overfeeding, there's a variety of different husbandry problems that you might get into, those need to be fixed. Finally, if water quality is good and the way you're taking care of the fish is good and the history suggests maybe you put a fish in there without quarantine, that's when you start thinking about parasites. And there's two different ways to go with parasites. One way to go with parasites would be to use a product called um, uh, Proxy. Proxy Pro, Proxy Pond, Proxy Fish, Proxy Great, Proxy, you know, Proxerific. You know, there's so many Proxy compounds out there. But uh, a Proxy Quanto compound with salt. That covers a lot of parasites. The only problem with salt is it kills plants. Okay. Most people would say the plants, whatever. Fish are more important. Some people would pull the plants out of the pond to spare them the salt. That's fine too. Um, so you could uh, just empirically treat with salt and proxyquantil and see how that goes. Um, alternatively, you could get a microscope and learn how to use one at a wet lab. They're offering those all over the country. The KHA program, AKCA, um, Koi Health Class at University of Georgia every year. North Carolina State University offers a class that's hobbyist level. Um, so there's plenty of places to learn how to use a microscope or check with your Koi Club. There may be people that can use a microscope there. Bring the fish over and get a microscope biopsy done, and then you don't have to guess about parasites. That's a really good idea. Or um, uh, find somebody over at a biology class, you know, like go over to the high school and see if there's somebody in the biology department who could help you find the parasites. Then what, what, you're like, what? I, I, don't, I don't even know what the parasites look like. No, all right, that's fine. Um, Basically, what you would do at that point is you would get the videos. They're all over KoiVet.com and DrJohnson.com and uh, get those videos. You can download them, and then you have those to look at to compare to what you're seeing under the microscope. There's like seven that you have to know. If you can memorize a phone number, ten digits, you should be able to memorize seven parasites. So, come on. So, anyway, water testing, husbandry, parasites. And finally, maybe, bacteria. And uh, bacteria are approached a lot of times with, by the appearance of the symptoms once you've checked water quality out because fish won't get over bacterial infections unless water quality is perfect. Um, if you think you got a bacterial infection, you got two choices. You can culture that through a diagnostic lab like koilab.com, K-O-I-L-A-B.com. Uh, or you can, um, it's not ideal, but you can start antibiotic therapy. There's uh, three different ways to attack that. Uh, medicated food is the foundation. Medicated food like Medicoy. Uh, and then um, injections of antibiotics are described on my various websites and, and in my book. Um, those are good ways to approach it. Or um, antibiotic, you know, dips and that sort of thing. But Triside Neo, that's also very good. It's antibiotic. It's not an antibiotic, but it works in an antimicrobial fashion. Triside Neo is also described on uh, drjohnson.com and many other places on the internet. So that kind of gives you an overview. So if you're sitting out there with sick fish, you know what you got to do. Get a test kit, check your water out, then look at your crowding, look at your feeding intervals, check out your filtration and water turnover, make sure the water is as clean as possible, and then finally, uh, maybe it is a parasite. Parasite treatments that might be good to start with would be uh, Proxyquantil and salt. Great starting point. And then if you, if you find yourself in real trouble, um, avail yourself of some of the other resources on the Koi Vet forum uh, or in the book that I wrote. I guess that's all for today. What do I do if my fish are sick? Thanks a lot.